Welcome, brothers and sisters, to Praying Through the Psalter, a brief daily meditation upon the great prayer songs of the Bible. Today is devotional 124. If you'll turn with me as we continue to work our way through Psalm 119, today we look at verses 113 through 128. Psalm 119, verses 113 through 128. Before we turn to this section of the psalm, I'll remind us of how we chiefly understand the Psalter. We say that these are the prayers of God to his people so that they can become our prayers uh, to be returned to God. And I do pray that the Psalter is beginning to work in our hearts and give us new prayers to pray. Secondly, every psalm teaches us how to pray and what to pray for. And thirdly, every psalm brings us to Jesus. We call it, therefore, it is messianic. If you'll turn with me to Psalm 119, verse 113. Uh, we are now, we continue to look at two sections of the psalm day by day. Uh, we will then, of course, be going into next week. We're taking our time through this great uh, longest chapter of the Bible, where every verse extols and praises the Word of God. Look with me, if you will, as I... Pray out loud for us the next section of the psalm, beginning in verse 113. I hate the, the, I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your promise that I may live, and let me not be put to shame in my hope. Hold me up that I may be safe and have regard for your statutes continually. You spurn all who go astray from your statutes, for their cunning is in vain. All the wicked of the earth you discard like dross, therefore I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, for I am afraid of your judgments. So the psalmist knows that true fear is reverence and respect for the God who made him, for the God who sustains him, and for, for the God he trusts will save him. At the beginning of this section, I am particularly taken with verse 113. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. One of the great blessings of going deeper into the word of God is that we become more able to discern lie from truth. Uh, for example, I'm meeting with a young man in our church uh, who is um, really trying hard to meditate and go deeper in God's Word day by day. And recently he was telling me about how he, he's been listening to a variety of things on the Internet uh, in different um, venues, uh, different websites, podcasts, of people who purport to be Christian or religious teachers. And he said uh, he's been listening to these podcasts and these internet sites for a couple of years, and, and he now understands the more he has learned of God's Word, how some of the people he's been listening to are not teaching the Word of God. They are false teachers. He said six months ago he would not have recognized that. He did not recognize that. But now, as he has been spending time every day in the Word of God and learning more of God through his Word, he is able to say, well, this teacher on this podcast, that's really good, holy teaching. But this person on this podcast, they're really twisting the truth so that it no longer is the truth. That's one of the great blessings of being in the Word we are able then to see who is double-minded and who is singular-minded on the Lord. Let's continue now with the next section, beginning with verse 121. I have done what is just and right. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Give your servant a pledge of good. Let not the insolent oppress me. My eyes long for your salvation and for the fulfillment of your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your steadfast love, and teach me your statutes. 
I am your servant. Give me understanding, that I may know your testimonies. It is time for the Lord to act, for your law has been broken. Therefore I love your commandments above gold, above fine gold. Therefore I consider all your precepts to be right. I hate every false way. Once again, we see, as we have seen before throughout Psalm 119, that there needs to be this beautiful uh, convergence of, uh, of the covenant relationship with God, that God comes to us by grace, and we respond by faith. And faith means to, to trust and to believe, and faith also means to be obedient. And so again, what makes all the Psalms powerful, but especially this one, Psalm 119, is that the, that the psalmist is uh, striving and, um, and promising that his life will be in conformity to the Word of God. He doesn't get it perfectly. Nobody can. But he wants to be in concert with God's Word. And that's what makes his prayers ever the more powerful. You know, the, the Bible talks about efficacious prayer. And and the prayers that are the most efficacious, the most effectual, are the prayers coming from hearts of God's people who truly seek to serve and to, to worship and to obey Him. And so I pray as we, as we uh, grow closer to God through the Psalter, that we will also seek to conform our life. How are we using our money? What are we using our money for? Are we being sacrificial? What are we doing with our time? Are we wasting our lives with unworthy things? Or are we spending time on things that are worthy, things that are true and beautiful and good for the sake of God and the blessing of others? How are we living our relationships? How are we treating our wife, our husband, our children, our friends, our neighbors? What is our worship life uh, right now? Are we able to go back and worship with God's people in a church building? Are we still worshiping online? But whatever we, whichever it is, are we being faithful with that? So part of learning to pray is very much learning to live. As we pray, so we live. And as we live, so we pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his whole countenance and give you his peace. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.